Hi, we are going to look at how many ions, really concentration, uh, what concentration is required to start a precipitation. So remember when we're talking about precipitation, we live with solubility, it's going to be our QSP. Uh, I think some of the challenge on these problems is really just identifying what to do. If you have a teacher that says, oh yeah, you just set up the equation and do the uh, equilibrium expression, you'd be like, oh yeah, I can do that. But sometimes it's hard to know um, based on what they're saying, what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to walk you through that part very, very detailed, in a very detailed manner. So here's our question. They want to know what is the, what is the minimum concentration of this iodine ion, iodide ion, to cause a lead iodide to precipitate from a 0.05 molar sodium, or lead to nitrate. And they do give us the KSP of the lead iodide. That KSP is 9.8 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, first thing that I do when I read this is I try and visualize it. And I'm trying to figure out what really is going on. So we have a solution. I have a 0.05 molar solution of lead nitrate. So let's draw this, okay? So here's my solution. And I'm gonna have lead nitrate in here. Now remember, anything with a nitrate, any compound with a nitrate is completely soluble. So this is going to 100% dissociate. So I'm gonna have this lead um, ion, and for every one lead ion, I have two nitrate ions. So I picture that in my mind of, okay, we've got this solution. And they're saying, well, what's the minimum concentration of that iodide ion that I need to add here? Okay, so I'm gonna add an iodide for it to cause lead iodide to precipitate. I'm like, okay, I'm adding this iodide and it's going to react with the lead and it's going to form, oops, sorry, it's going to form a lead to iodide compound and this will be solid. But remember, this right here will barely, barely break apart. Um, it has this KSP right here. It will barely break apart. So I'll actually have, I can add some iodine ions in here and they won't react. But then when I reach that value of the KSP where the concentrations are constant, when I reach this value of KSP, then the iodine will come and react with the lead and it'll produce that lead iodide. So that's my thought process. Um, so with that, we are going to write out this uh, chemical equation. I want to look at the lead to iodide and its precipitation. Because remember, that's solid. That's what we're driving at as well. How much iodine do I have to add into this in order for that to go to a solid, for it to precipitate? Um, so this, remember, when you drop it in water, is going to dissociate into the lead to um, ion and we're going to have two of the iodide ions. I'm going to put aqueous here and aqueous there. Um, so it's this reverse reaction really that I'm trying to get at. Um, when this goes in reverse, it makes a solid. And I'm wondering, well, at what point, how much iodine do I have to put into this solution for it to form that solid? Well, the key is right here on KSP. Remember KSP, is just products of our reactants. Our products are going to be the lead to ion times that iodide ion. And be really careful, it has a two coefficient, so that two becomes the exponent, so it's squared. Divided by reactant, so that's a solid. And you know this with KSP, um, that's just going to be over one since that's a solid. Let's plug in what we do have. Um, so we are going to have a KSP of 9.8 times 10 to the minus nine equals, uh, well guess what? I got the concentration of the lead. I know how many lead ions are in here. I know that concentration of that lead, it's from right there, that lead nitrate. We're starting with lead nitrate in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that concentration in. The uh, lead two is 0 0.05 molar. That's the concentration of that lead right there. So the question is, well what's the concentration of iodide for this to reach perf perfect equilibrium, okay? Perfect equilibrium. Because um, remember, at KSP, that's where we have perfect saturation. And I wanna write that down. This is something so important. Remember, at KSP, we have saturation. And remember, the other term that we use, of course, with KSP, is when we're um, at KSP, this is also equilibrium.
That's why I can use this equilibrium expression is because at equilibrium, this solution will be completely saturated. I can't um, dissolve any more ions. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this out. Divide both sides by 0.05. So that cancels. And then I have a square right here. So let's take the square root of both sides and x will equal, let's see here, it will be 4.43 times 10 to the minus four. And remember, that is that iodide ion concentration. So if I add it exactly, this molarity, 4.43 times 10 to the minus four um, of my iodide ion. So I have that exact molarity in here is perfect saturation. I have dissolved the maximum amount of iodine compared to lead. Now, they want to know precipitate. So here's what I can say. If I add even just a little bit more, one more little um, piece of, of salt, whatever uh, this iodide is coming from, maybe like we're dropping a sodium iodide in and, and getting our iodide from that. If I add just a little bit more of that iodide ion, what's it going to do? It will react with the lead and form that lead iodide solid. So the answer for this is anything greater than 4.43 times 10 to the minus four molar of the iodide will precipitate, will precipitate because that is the max to add for saturation. If I add any more than this, it's over is going to precipitate. So something, two things that I want to pull out of this, couple of things. Notice I didn't have to do an ice table. We didn't have to do an ice table because I was given the amount of the lead from this solution. All I had to do was plug it into the equilibrium expression to find the concentration at equilibrium. They gave me an amount saying, hey, this is going to be your equilibrium. How uh, was the concentration? How much iodide could you add to be at that equilibrium, perfect saturation. And then we can say, well, beyond that, that's when it's going to precipitate. So it's so important when you're doing these KSP problems, keep in mind, equilibrium is saturation. At KSP, you have saturation. If you're beyond, if you have any more than that equilibrium amount, you get the precipitate, okay? Driving principle. The other thing that I want to point out, that this is a common mis um, mistake and a common question that my students will ask me. Students are so used to writing ice tables on this, they know um, from an ice table that we would do a plus x and a plus 2x um, when we do the change in the ice table. And so students will say, well, Mrs. Lobb, there's a 2 in front of the iodine. Do I have to put a 2 right here? And the answer is no. You only put a 2 there if you're doing the 2x, the concentration times two. Here, we're just straight up finding the concentration of this iodide, and the two is taken care of in that square. I just straight up wanna know that concentration. I'm not trying to find the value of change. This 2x is showing me the amount of change. Here, I just wanna know exact concentration at equilibrium where that X indicates change. So there's two different things, two different things there. Um, now, there is a follow-up question that's really common with these types of problems. Here's the follow-up question. It says, what is the lead concentration when the iodide is 0.015? So notice what they've done. They've just flipped this, um, this thinking. Instead of starting with, hey, here's a lead, let's drop some iodide into it how much iodide, now they're saying, oh, hey, wait, 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 you have a solution of iodide. Um, what could you drop in for that lead nitrate? Um, or what could you drop in for the lead um, to see, um, to get to that exact equilibrium, to get to that saturation? Um, and notice how they word this. All it says is, what is the lead concentration when the iodide is 0.0015? Embedded in that is equilibrium, is equilibrium. Um, so, and how I know this is concentration. We're not talking about solids here. We want to know how much lead will float in that water. Well, I can't have any more than the KSP amount. I can't have any more than the saturated amount. And all of that 
exists at equilibrium. So we're using Ksp. Um, so let's go ahead and write out um, one more time. We've got this lead iodide in equilibrium with the lead and the two moles of the iodide ion. Ksp is products, the lead ion, times the iodide ion, because of that two is going to be squared. So now we plug in what we have. Um, again, Ksp, 9.8 times 10 to the minus nine equals, here's my question. Now I want to know the amount of the lead ion. What's the maximum amount that I can have for that lead ion when the concentration of the iodide is 0 0.0015? And again, embedded in this, I'm at equilibrium. This is saturation. Um, so if we square this and divide it over, x will equal 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And remember, that's our lead 2 ion. So again, it says, what is the concentration of that lead ion when the iodide is 0 0.0015? Well, the maximum concentration that we can have is 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus three molar. I can't have any more lead. If I add even just a little bit more lead, what's it going to do? It's going to precipitate. It's going to go backwards right here and become that solid lead iodide. Um, so straightforward, when you're looking at precipitation, Take the Ksp and the one concentration they give you, plug it into your equilibrium expression, and you automatically find the concentration of the other ion at saturation, at equilibrium, right before it would precipitate, right before it precipitates. Okay, so that's how you can find the ions that are required to um, form a precipitate. Past this concentration, you're gonna have a precipitate. All right, good work. If you have other questions, check out the Solubility KSP playlist. All right, thank you, have a nice day.